Today we're going to be talking about prisms and, poly and polyhedron. Polyhedron is a solid bounded by polygons that enclose a single space. Remember, poly means many, hedron means faces. Poly, you're going to be um, seeing that word a lot throughout your mathematics career. Remember, poly means many, and then hedron is our face. So polyhedron have to have polygons on their sides. So a prism is considered a polyhedron because you're going to have polynomials on the uh, for the faces. A cylinder has circles, so that's going to be a non-polyhedron because you don't have polygons. Pyramid, technically considered polyhedron because you have one base that's a polygon and then your sides are going to be triangles. Cone, not considered a polyhedron because you have um, circle as your base and then you kind of have like a um, sector as your lateral side. A cube, considered a polyhedron because each one of the sides is a square. A sphere doesn't have really technically any faces, so that's a non-polyhedron. Some other key terms, a right prism, okay, is up 90 degrees, like a regular old box. An oblique prism is kind of like a box slanted on its side, where your sides aren't rectangles. Here are your lateral sides are rectangles, versus here your lateral sides are going to be um, parallelograms. I forgot the word there. Okay, so your bases of your prism. You're going to have equal bases on the top and the bottom. So in a prism, you have two bases, okay? Congruent sides on the top and the bottom, okay? And it could have six sides. It could have ten sides. It could have four sides. It could have two sides. But your bases, you only have two congruent bases. Versus the lateral faces are all the other sides. So in a right prism, your lateral faces are going to be rectangles, as I said. And lateral faces here are going to be, um, I keep wanting to say pyramids, are parallelograms. Now the lateral edges, okay, so our lateral edges here are going to be all of these sides that would, and then there's one that's kind of hidden back here. are going to be these sides where your lateral faces meet. Okay, here we would have our hidden one. So our lateral edges here are going to be, again, where all of your lateral faces are going to meet. Now the altitude or the height it's the perpendicular, so it's a perpendicular segment from one base to another base. So in this case, our altitude or our height is exactly what it appears to be, okay? So it's one of our lateral edges. But here, okay, perpendicular to our base, it so happens to be outside the base, but this segment here would be our altitude. And I've kind of already talked about this. Prisms um, are named by the shape of the bases. So if we have a hexagon as the base, it's a hexagonal base. If you have a, a pentagon, it's a pentagonal um, prism. Okay, our lateral faces are all rectangles. Lateral area is just the area of each one of the rectangles all combined. The total area is the lateral faces plus twice the bases. So lateral area of right prism. Okay, so my lateral area of that piece right there would be length times not the height, Marnell, would be the length times the height. 
And there's two of those. There's one in the front. And one there in the back. So there's two of those. Add to that. This face, this lateral face, so that is the width times the height. And again, there's two of those because I have one on this side and then one over here on this side. Now let's do a little work here. Each one of those has a height to it. So you have, if I factor out that height, we have twice the length plus twice the width. Okay, so what that is, this is perimeter of the base. So your lateral area is perimeter of our base times the height. And that's an easy formula for you guys to remember. Now volume. Volume of a right prism. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember, volume is how many little square boxes I can fit into um, square cubes, how many one by one cubes I could fit into our prism. So volume is length times width times height because length times width gets me how many I can fit on just one base times the height. So area of the base. area of our base times our height. Okay, let's get to some examples. Find the lateral area, surface area, and volume of the figure. So I'm first going to find the area of the base. Now I often use just a big B to represent area of the base. So area of the base, this is a triangular prism and most of our triangular, most of our prisms are going to be equilateral, and this one is. So remember, the area of the base for an equilateral triangle is s squared root 3 over 4. That's why I pushed that equation so much in the last chapter. We're going to be using that a lot. So 4 squared root 3 over 4, that simplifies to 4 root 3. So that's the area of the base. For our lateral area, that's going to be perimeter of the base. So each side is 4. There's three of them. Perimeter of the base times the height, which is 12. Or you can look at it like the area of each one of my rectangles is 4 times 12, and I have three of them. So that is 144. Make a quick note. I gave you units, so I want units back. Units squared, because we're talking about area. Total area is my lateral area plus twice my bases, plus 8 root 3 square inches. Now my volume is area of the base times the height, which works out to be 48 root 3 cubic inches, because it's how many cubic units I can fit into our prism. Okay, our next example. A right prism has three bases with edges that are three times as long as its lateral edges. The prism's total height is 750 square meters. Find its value. So each one of my lateral edges is x, and the base is 3 times that. So my volume, which is area of the base, so 9x squared times my height, which is x, is equal to 750. Oh, total area. Why am I going to volume? Because I'm trying to rush through the lesson. Total area, Marnell. Get with the program. Total area. Okay. So my 
lateral area, which is perimeter of the base, which is 12x times the height plus twice the area of the base, which is 9x squared, is equal to 750. So this was my lateral area, and this was the area of each one of the bases. So we have 12x squared plus 18x squared is equal to 750. So I have 30x squared is equal to 750. Solving a very exciting equation. I think that's why I got so excited about it because I'm looking for the volume. I now know this side is 5, this side is 15, this side is 15. So all I have to do is area of the base, so my volume, area of the base times the height, which works out to be 9 centimeters, meters. Man, I really screwed up this question, but I want to redo it. I'm not going to lie. Meters cubed. Okay, next one. A ray prism has height H and bases of regular hexagons that are each S units long. And my height is H. For an equation for the volume in terms of H and S. So I need my area of the base times my height. Now area of the base. Remember a hexagon, I don't know if you guys realize this, a hexagon each one of these is an equilateral triangle. So I have six equilateral triangles, each with a side length of S, so I have S squared root 3 over 4. So therefore, our volume formula is going to be the 6 of the 4 can reduce to be a 3 S squared H root 3 all over 2. And again, with a hexagon, each one of these is a regular, is an equilateral triangle because each one of these angles is 60 degrees. That makes your life super easy. Okay, I promise. Last question. A diagonal of a cube, so I know each one of my side lengths is the same, joins two vertices not on the same face. So a vertice down here, not on the same face, so not on this face, this face, or this face, so basically, I consider it the longest segment of our cube is 4 root 3. What is the value? Okay, so I need to find the area of the base because my volume is going to be area of the base times the height. Actually, let's leave that as this. Area of the base times our height. Now, I'm going to be able to find numbers for each one of these. Okay? If I look at this right triangle here, So that segment that goes along my base is a 45, 45, 90 triangle because I have X, I have X, and it's a square, and the diagonal of a square makes, gives us a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this segment here is equal to X root 2. So now do your Pythagorean theorem to figure out what X is. So my Pythagorean theorem is x squared plus 
x root 2 squared is equal to 4 root 3 squared. So I have x squared plus 2x is equal to 16 times 3, which is 48. And this should be an x squared. So I have 3x squared is equal to 48. x squared is equal to 16. Therefore, x is equal to 4. Oh, a cube is easy, Mardo. Get with the program. You didn't need this formula. It's just 4 times 4 times 4. So our volume is equal to 64 centimeters cubed. There are your lesson questions. Please make sure your summary is submitted on time.